What's up, guys? I uh, just wanted to talk about something real quick. Uh, something that no one is ready for. The stuff that's coming upon this world. A day of destruction. All right. So my so from my understanding. So, so basically, I mean, a lot of y'all see the signs. Some people don't see the signs. Some people don't even believe in God or believe in Jesus and have no idea he's about to come back to this world. But some of y'all see the signs and realize Jesus is about to come back. Realize, some of y'all realize that we're about to run into this tribulation time. And that is about to be the worst time in the history of the world. See, we're living in the best time. As far as as far as believers, if you're a true believer, it's the best time to be alive. Because we could possibly not even see death, not even taste death. But if you're an unbeliever, you don't have faith in Jesus Christ, Yeshua, the King of the world, I mean, it's the worst time to be alive. Absolutely. But I just wanted to go over real quick my understanding of how this plays out on that day. At the beginning, of the worst time in human history. All right, so from my understanding, same day is the resurrection. So first off, there's a resurrection of the dead. The dead who are worthy to live in God's kingdom for a thousand years. See, Jesus is coming back to reign on this earth for a thousand years. A day to the Lord is a thousand years. We've gone 6,000 years so far. We're right at the end of the 6,000 years. Then there's another thousand years. The seventh day. A day to the Lord is a thousand years. The seventh day. That's the millennial reign of Christ. That's when Jesus reigns here as king for a thousand years. And then we go into eternity. But, but here's my understanding on how everything happens. So those who are worthy to live in his kingdom and live for this thousand years are resurrected. The, the dead first are raised out of the graves. Then those of us who are alive are caught up a lot of people are familiar with the word rapture. So from my understanding, on this same day, there's a lot of things happen that happen pretty much, I believe, on the same day. If not the same day, within a very short time period. Damascus is going to be destroyed. Damascus, Syria. That's in Isaiah, 20, uh, Isaiah 17 and Jeremiah 49. And first off, I'll, I'll just give y'all give y'all a clue. And uh, something that confirmed this, I was listening to the book Second Ezra's today. It's in uh, it's not in the Bible these days, but it was in the 1611 King James version. And it had the Bibles back then. It was a part of the uh, Apocrypha. But uh, something I listened to and something I saw on that today confirmed it for me. Confirmed this revelation for me. This understanding that I've had for a little while. That whenever it says, whenever it talks about a woman in labor, 
when, whenever in the, in prophecies and stuff, when it says a woman in labor, or a woman in travail, or about to give birth, or references like that, and speaking of the resurrection, because the earth is going to give birth to the dead. So whenever you're speaking to that, th that type of terminology, woman in labor, woman in travail, um, stuff like that, and speaking of the resurrection. So the dead are raised, those who are alive, See if you if you if you put your faith in Jesus Christ and Yeshua HaMashiach in Jesus Christ right now, you have the opportunity to not even to not even see death, to not even die, to just be given a glorified body, like an angel, without even dying. Why would anyone pass that up? Anyway, so like I said, the first thing is the destruction of Damascus. That's in Isaiah 17 and Jeremiah 49. Jeremiah 49 mentions the woman in labor. I'm gonna I'm gonna just say woman in labor every time, even though it might be a, a little bit different terminology. It's it's similar and it's speaking about the same thing. That happens. Also, well, first off, this is at the beginning of the day of the Lord. Jesus comes back in the clouds. It's at the beginning of the day of the Lord. He comes back in the clouds and takes those who are ready, those who are his. Then a couple years later, then he gives the devil his time on earth. And a couple years later, he comes back with us and destroys the devil and the Antichrist and takes his kingdom. But anyway, there's the destruction of Damascus, which I believe leads right into the destruction of Babylon. Babylon, I believe, is the United States. That's Mystery Babylon referenced in Revelation 17 and 18. Also, Jeremiah 50 and 51. Uh, Isaiah 13. And, and there's a few other passages as well. And there's a reference in uh, Jeremiah 50 or 51. Woman in labor, referencing the same time as the resurrection, and that's one of the that's one of the main reasons that and and the fact that it's going to be completely wiped clean, completely wiped out, with no one living there ever again, is why I believe it can't be Jerusalem. Even though there are some very good reasons to believe it's Jerusalem. And there's, there's also reasons for Rome. There's also reasons for, for Mecca and everything. But I don't see anything fitting it like uh, the United States. I believe the U.S. is Mystery Babylon. But when this happens, this day, that is very soon, which could be in the next month or two, be any day I believe Babylon America is destroyed Damascus is destroyed there's the Gog Magog war which is Ezekiel 38 and 39 and that that's basically the surrounding nations is is uh basically Russia Turkey Iran which all in the last uh, year or two 
have joined together in coalition and held press conferences together and everything. And they were never allies before until these last couple of years. But them three, Russia, Turkey, Iran, along with Sudan, who just uh, a day or two ago allied with the with the uh, Iran and Libya and a few other countries basically surrounding like the outside ring around around Israel they're gonna attack Israel they're gonna try to completely wipe out Israel and come in and take the Bible says they're gonna come and take come and try to take a spoil like the spoils of war come, come and try to take the wealth and just in the last year or two, in the last couple of years at least, the hugest oil fields, like in the world, the biggest oil reserves in the world, were found in the Golan Heights in northern Israel. And just a, just a month ago, see, see the Golan Heights is considered occupied territory. It's not considered Israel's land or anyone else's land in particular. But about a month ago, Trump, Trump declared that the Golan Heights, where that oil reserve is, he declared it's Israel's. So that's more, even more reason for people to come against Israel and America, which I believe is Babylon. It's about to be destroyed. But anyway, I'm going to be kind of short with it from, from this point out. So basically, when this happens, this part I didn't even mention yet. There's going to be the greatest earthquake in the history of the world. You can find that in Revelation 6, Isaiah 24, Ezekiel 38, and other places in scripture. An earthquake. The greatest earthquake in the history of the world. Where every wall falls to the ground. The whole earth moving. At the same time. There's going to be hail. And brimstone coming down. Coals of fire. And the hail. It's not no regular hail. It's about to be 100 pound hailstones. So, greatest earthquake in the world. 100 pound hailstones coming down. Along with, like mixed with fire and brimstone. Damascus, Syria is going to be destroyed. Israel is going to be attacked. What causes it is breaking the everlasting covenant, which I believe is the dividing... And that's referenced in Isaiah 24. I believe that's the, the dividing of the land of Israel or Jerusalem. And that brings a curse upon the world. But basically, as if you read Ezekiel 38, when the surrounding nations attack Israel, that's when God defends them personally. That's when Jesus comes on a cloud. You can read that in Psalm 18. That's when Jesus comes on a cloud and hailstones and coals of fire are raining down in front of them and those who are worthy that's when the resurrection and the rapture happens we're caught up away from the destruction that's coming down upon the earth greatest earthquake in human history 100 pound hailstones coals of fire plus more from my understanding a quarter of the world basically like 2 billion people are going to die that day And from my understanding, America is going to be wiped out that day. Like, completely. The wrath of God coming down. And us getting attacked by nations from all sides. And I'm not going to get too much more into the Mystery Babylon thing right now. But it's Iran and a nation from the north, which I believe is Russia. The U.S. has problems with both right now. So anyone living in the United States, if you don't know Jesus, 
I truly believe your lifespan is short. I'm fully confident your lifespan is short. It may be shorter than I think. There's only one way to eternal life. There's only one way to life after death. That's Jesus Christ. Having faith in Him. That He'll save you from your sins. That He'll forgive you and give you eternal life. That a quarter of the world dies. That, that one day. And that one day. And after that, it's the worst time in human history. The locust type creatures. They're going to sting. Sting people. People are going to be wishing for death for five months. And anyone other than that. Anyone that believes in Jesus. Is going to be automatically put to death. It's going to be the mark of the beast. and That's so much. So much. I'm not going to get into more of, that, more of this right now. This video is already long enough, but basically, what's going to happen? It's going it, to, like, pretty much all at the same time. The U.S. destroyed. Damascus destroyed. The resurrection and rapture, the worst earthquake in human history. Read that in Isaiah 24. Revelation 6. Israel attacked. And, and two thirds of them being destroyed. Y'all don't want to be here for this. Y'all don't want to be here for this. Very few people, if any, in this country will survive this day, if any. The Bible says it's going to be completely wiped out, desolate, no one living in it. Speaking of Mystery Babylon, which have a strong belief is the United States. And I'm going to make a video on that soon. Your only hope is Jesus. Your only hope is Yeshua HaMashiach, Savior of the world, Jesus Christ. Other than that, you're going to die very soon. You're going to die a thousand years from now. You're going to be resurrected and stand in front of a holy God, all-powerful God. And if you don't have faith in his son, you're going to be thrown into a lake of fire to be killed permanently, cease to exist, when you can live forever in perfection and all and everything you want with God, with a body like, with an angel body, immortal body. Make your choice. The time is short.